So um, I felt like I was that patient. I was, I had to be the difficult patient, you know, and the initial feelings were fair. Um, I'm like, oh my God, imagine having blood pressure readings double what your normal is. I don't want to go home. I don't want to stroke out. I need to be here. I knew I was in the right place at the right time for all the right reasons with great health care. Okay, because this was my hospital from the get-go. I knew I was going to come here and give birth because I like it here. Um, I had questions like, why me? Why now? Why, why, why? Um, there was no long-term plan. You know, Ron was like, well, are you going to be home today, tomorrow? So I can tell my boss something and I didn't have anything definitive to give to him. And so there was also frustrations on his end. And um, I still had to deal with HG, hyperemesis gravidarum, on top of all that was going on. Okay, that did not really subside until they put me on fluids. Okay, that's another story. So fast forward two days in, my blood pressure just would not stick within the 130s, 150s range. And I know for some of you, that is... You know, if I say 150, even 140, you will freak out because that is not your normal, okay? And I've always believed that people need to let go of the 120 over 80 number because we're not all the same. The blood pressure for someone with a certain physique would not be the same ideally for another person with another phys physique or build. Um, and I'm not here to give you medical advice, but... That is just something I learned to appreciate over the years. Um, in other situations, I know there are a lot of older people who would tell you when they learn about blood pressure that they would tell them um, your ideal is 100 plus your age. So um, there is that as well to consider. But moving on from that, I, I don't, I'm not giving you medical advice, but we're not always going to be at 120 over 80. People usually freak out when their numbers are not 120 over 80. I learned that if you get up and walk across the room, if you breathe, if you push when you force the poop, if you have uh, an argument, if you play sport, whatever, your blood pressure fluctuates all the time. But the issue with me on bed rest in the hospital, I was all over the place, okay? So I started getting really, really anxious. Um, I kept thinking, how much longer do I have here? Um, what is my bill going to look like? And I do have insurance. I'm a teacher. Ron has insurance as well and all of that stuff. Um, am I going to make it through this pregnancy? What is my body trying to tell me? So there were countless questions that I had. I'm not kidding. I told you guys I actually journaled and highlighted. So anyway, um... On the fourth day, when I woke up, so on the third day, not the fourth day, the third day, I was a little bit more hopeful because maybe the nurse that I had was a little bit more reassuring. And every day I saw two nurses because they worked 12 hour shifts from seven to seven. So I had a seven to seven day time and then seven to seven overnight. And this particular nurse was very reassuring. And for some reason, my numbers were better with her. And so I felt confident that, okay, I can go home. The next day, my body took a turn for the worse. Guys, I felt defeated. Um, I had so many questions. I was like, what is the underlying issue for this? I'm so tired of running all these tests because, you know me, I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac. I have seen a lot of specialists over the last couple of years just trying to figure out what's going on with me when I was struggling with anxiety. And lo and behold, it was anxiety. And, um, you know, I spoke to an internal medicine doctor here. I spoke with a dietitian. I met with a lot of specialists. And when I, when, I, when I got to the point where they were just giving me more and more and more drugs, that is when I got, I started getting really, really scared. Um, my nephrologist was the one who was kind of 
deciding what to put me on, what dosage, how to, you know, because he's a kidney specialist and he was very, what I liked about him, he looked at the bigger picture. He was very holistic. So there is also something, I'm fully aware that there is something called, as my doctor would say, a, a thin or a skinny hyper, hypertensive. So I wasn't obese, I wasn't a smoker, I didn't have those things going on and you know it was very baffling to them. So they did more blood work, they were trying to find um, some kind of tumor, there was a specific name for it, on my kidneys, on my adrenal glands. Um, they were just trying to find something and honestly, I don't want to say it that way, I was hoping they would find something so I can fix the problem. Does that make sense? It's not like you're wishing bad on yourself, but after exploring all options, after addressing the anxiety, because by that time I was taking um, something just to help relax and sedate and my readings were still, they were even higher. That was the scary part. With more drugs, my numbers went higher, like scary high, like 240 um, MMHG over 180s. Um, I mean, it was pretty bad. And I know your jaw is going to drop and all that stuff, but it was pretty, pretty bad. And um, it was very overwhelming and it was a lot to process. I literally felt like I had a nervous breakdown at the hospital because I was frustrated with my situation. I was missing my daughter, Ebony, and I had nothing definitive to give to Ron. And so he was thrown in a situation where he had to um, miss work and all that stuff. And Ron, you know, he's great. He will call his boss and tell his boss what's going on and all that. But not every single person on the planet is understanding. And so, yeah, people tell you, don't worry about Ron. Don't worry about Ron. Ron will figure it out. He's a man, man, and that kind of thing. But at the same time, you do worry because you, you've put your, you know, you feel like an inconvenience. Not that he made me feel that way, but I, I just felt like, okay, this was a mess, and there was no plan moving forward. So what would, you know, what should he do? That kind of thing. But anyway, um, so over the course of five days, y'all, um, there were a lot of intense conversations um it was very very overwhelming for me just to see everybody come at you the NICU specialist doctor telling you this is what's going to happen if the baby is delivered sooner than later or your regular OB tells you you know Benta I don't think you're going to be here for another day you could possibly here be here until you deliver so that could be five weeks and I'm like oh my goodness I cannot be at the hospital for five weeks, you know, I have nothing to do here. And I just wanted to be home. I wanted to be with my child in the comfort of my home. And she knew that and she saw that, but she had to get very strict with me very quickly and, she, you know, show me that if I don't take care of the situation, I may not even be around for mommy time. You know you know guys you know what I mean so it was that 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 stressful um I think in 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 the moments I probably did have some panic going on I mean who wouldn't you know I also had frustrations because everyone would keep saying try to relax try to let things go try to lower your blood pressure and it's like okay what do you think I have been doing all this time? I've been doing everything. I've been doing everything. I've been trying. I didn't have the TV on. I had meditative music on. I did my acupressure points. Um, the food in the hospital, the heart healthy menu. I was living off that, like just steamed. Um, carrots and and whatever i was trying to really be proactive with bringing on my blood pressure and so the few hours before they deliver the baby 
um, what was happening, they were maxing on doses. And it was frustrating. The numbers kept going higher and higher. And y'all, I was in tears. I'm like, oh my God, I'm a mess. This is it. I'm going to get a stroke. You know, that kind of thing. And of course, being in that mindset, you, it doesn't help anyone. So there I was trying to reach out to my mom, Ron, just everybody. And because I'm thinking, I'm truly thinking, okay, this is a mess. I may not make it. My baby is not going to make it. I'm probably not going to make it. And that was my reality. That was my reality. So my doctor came in, well, the nurse, and she was amazing. I had like amazing care here, but that's something else. I'm going to tell you guys in another section of the video. Um, she came to me and she said, how soon can your husband be here? And I'm like, why? She's like, you're having this baby now. I was like, okay. I didn't fight it. I didn't want to fight it. I just wanted the problem fixed. And so backtrack to the previous days, you know, when I was first admitted, these were already conversations we were having. You know, my doctor was telling me in the event that you do deliver over the, the weekend, in the event that you do deliver next week, in the event that you do deliver in two, three, four weeks, this is X, Y, Z. She'll be um, in NICU and all of that stuff. So it was a lot okay um there was no there was no waiting i literally had to call ron quickly i had 10 minutes to do all of this call my mom secure some stuff call ron tell him what was going on tell him he needed to find himself in the or with me but he needed to secure abney y'all ron did not make it on time and i was so scared I was so afraid because I was alone. And I know in these Corona times, a lot of pregnant women have to birth alone. A lot of them based on their hospital policy. In my case, I was allowed one person, but our house is like 30 minutes drive away and they didn't necessarily have 30 minutes. Um, my doctor kind of waited around for as long as she could have within res being responsible and i remember distinctly just crying and bawling and begging her to take care of me i called my mom it was weird because i was on the phone with my mom talking about other stuff and then the conversation just changed to oh my god mom i have to go get prepped for an emergency c-section they're delivering the baby right now and i don't know how that sounded to her on that end but that's that's kind of like how things happen very quickly um <clears throat> my doctor was nice very nice to me to allow background music they had music in the operating room um i requested that she did not tie down my hands and my feet because that freaks me out and so they didn't um she was very reassuring. She gave me a hug before the procedure. She said, I'm going to take care of you. That's my job. I know you want your husband here, but he's not here. We need to get started. And um, the cool thing is that when I had my first C-section with Abony, the anesthesiologist was the same one this time around. So I saw familiar faces, even though it was a different doctor. What was weird, um, I got a spinal this time around, not an epidural. So that was a different kind of experience. I was numb from here down. Um, and then the lights, how they're made up, I was able to see everything. I didn't say anything at the moment, but that was kind of, that kind of freaked me out a little bit, but I didn't say everything, anything. But I remember laying there, they even allow me to have my, um, ball sack okay and this is a sock with two tennis balls and this is how i sleep the pressure helps relieve tension and she actually allowed me to lay there with that as well she wanted to make me feel as comfortable as possible knowing very well what we have discussed in the past regarding me and birthing um she wanted me to 
have that moment um, because there are lots of things I wouldn't have with this pregnancy given that my my daughter my second daughter was delivered eight nine weeks earlier than the actual planned time um, there's no maternity shoot there's no belly cast there's no nothing so you know I don't want my children growing up thinking that there was a preference of one over the other and with this pregnancy there is a different kind of bond we have been through so much already in a pandemic with hyperemesis gravidarum it's interesting to see what it would be interesting to see what our relationship is like knowing that me and Abney already have such a strong bond but um anyway I'm not setting up kids for any competition or anything like that I'm just saying it would be interesting so um I they, they prepped me for surgery and and all of that and I was basically by myself and y'all that was the most stressful time of my life I you know the anesthesiologist was there and he was like just breathe through your mouth he was so nice he actually put lip balm on my lips he's like you know your lips look a little dry i'm gonna put some lip balm on your, your lip and he did that and they were kind of pressing on my shoulder and just kind of really helping me get through the process and um my daughter was delivered at 29 weeks and some days so about 30 day, 30 weeks right because she was measuring a little bit of a little bit ahead so i'll just say 30 weeks and um, I never got to hold her. It is the day after I still haven't held her. I haven't seen her, but they took pictures of her and hopefully I can go to NICU tonight to see her for the first time. And that in itself was really truly a very hard place for me to be, not being able to go skin to skin at the time. But obviously for all the right reasons, I couldn't do that. So it was also a selfless act. Um, to emotionally let that go you know I wouldn't have those moments again you know that's and that's the thing that's a struggle for me as well um what else can I tell you guys so the entire procedure probably took about an hour and f maybe 15 minutes I remembered um I don't know I remember opening my eyes in the room and seeing Ron I have very faint memory of Ron he was there I wasn't saying anything much to him or whatever and then at one time he said he had to go back home because you know Abney was at home um, she was home with someone an adult responsible um, you know his bigger daughter and um, but he had to leave and so everything was really really fuzzy at the time and um, that was that was the story and it's the, the funny thing about it they had to deliver the baby because my placenta was the 99 percent probably the reason why my blood pressure was doing what it was doing so the take home is regardless of testing um on a certain spectrum for protein in your urine or whatever else they're looking for in addition to the high blood pressure um, to say you have preeclampsia, I was actually that patient who was a typical preeclampsia patient. My signs and symptoms did not follow the general trend and pattern. Um, so that is what that is what made me atypical. So I was atypical preeclampsia. Um, I saw my doctor to the reflection, twisting my umbilical cord and getting the placenta out. And I swear, as soon as the placenta was out, my blood pressure just regulated, just like that. Um, the next day, I noticed some of my HG symptoms disappeared as well. Um, God, this is a long video. And what else? I I was placed on, so you can see back here, um, magnesium sulfate. I was given magnesium sulfate um, for God knows how long, but I'm on that. And the reason why they gave me that was to help, you know, in when you have preeclampsia or eclampsia, you can develop, you can have seizures. And so magnesium sulfate combats seizures. So that is why I'm getting so much. But the side effects, you know, it makes you really sedated. Hence the reason I'm in bed like this. 
you feel really loopy um you just feel like you need to sleep all the time you might have hot rush and with your skin you might have itching and that is why i have you see me on the cameras itching but um there's also benadryl that i can take to address that um a little bit of a blurry vision and just other stuff that you have to deal with and i rather go through all of the torture um than have a seizure or something like that so it's almost done it's just a one-time thing just to get my levels up above therapeutic because they did test that in my blood and i was okay i had okay magnesium levels but they wanted it a little bit higher given that i was a typical preeclampsia patient and um it's been interesting i i guess i'll make another video just talk about the general feel of things um just how i feel about my delivery and all of that but that was my experience and really this is just what took me brought me to the er so um you know if you're a mama and you're expecting and you're having these blood pressure issues don't let it slide um i didn't have these issues with abney if you go back to my videos with abney you guys will see that i had what i like to call a really good pregnancy it seemed perfect um but you know even having a, when i had a conversation with my doctor today she said you know i noticed after abney like a on your sixth visit your blood pressure started going up a little and she said um that would have been a sign you know where it was pers it was persisting and maybe maybe we could have addressed it then regardless we agreed to do one more blood draw to make sure i don't have any underlying issues like lupus and whatever else because y'all those numbers yesterday were crazy high and when my blood pressure dropped below 100 because it got to that point like a blood pressure reading of 97 over 77 that is not good for me either okay so my sweet spot is going to be different from your sweet spot and everyone's sweet spot is going to be different um, and it showed, it showed with how my baby responded. So, um, her name is Amara. She is in NICU. I have not seen her with my own eyes. Um, I cannot hold her. She'll be there for a while, you know, up to 40 weeks. So hopefully I can, hopefully all turns out well, but I want to hold my baby. And honestly, I don't think I want to rush to get home. I think, um, that was one mistake I made the first time because I missed being in the house so much. But here, I'm being taken care of. The staff is amazing. The nurses are amazing. And um, I think I'm just going to enjoy being sended to for a while because the pain is unbelievable. The second time around with my C-section. Um, this is why I'm sitting like this. I'm so scared to move. Even though I'm getting pain medication, it is very, very, very um painful down there so thank you guys for listening to this long video but i just wanted to share my experience i don't know if i'm going to divide this into two or one but if you listen to the end thank you so much all right bye guys